Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. October 18th, 2021. We'll do weird things here in just a minute. Hello. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah, it's, it's nice. a little chilly. Got cold, man. A little w- too cold. Woke up looking at the... Too cold. At, at the temperature for, for the run. 48 degrees. Perfect. Ooh. Perfect running weather. Jesus. It's the perfect wa- running weather. That's here- okay, running weather, if it's if it's sunny, if it's clear out. Here's the problem. You, you, you stop, you die. <laughs> yeah right it's 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 uh, uh the walking game uh, uh bachman book i've i've realized this that uh i have running gear for colder weather because in the bay it was often cold uh but it's all black and now i run in a very residential area that is not all lit particularly well got it and so now i'm i'm just a ninja Yep. Like, I'm just uh. there to be obscured so I can I can exact righteous revenge. Waiting for it, the part where this isn't awesome. You got to get one, just you got to get one piece of clothing with a reflective strip on it. And sh- there will be no question. I Yes, but then I wouldn't be able to be a ninja. I wonder how <laughs> many ninjas. Ninja, okay. I want, well, no, here's what I wonder. How many ninjas get run over by cars? <laughs> Because they are not seen. We'll never know. We'll never, we'll never know. know. We'll never know. We'll never know. I mean, is it just like deer? Like every once in a while, like you know somebody who hits a ninja because they were running across the road and you couldn't see him in time? I mean, I would imagine there's, there's... the safest ninja is a corporate sponsored ninja with like reflective logos on their front. Maybe like, they like should. Like Emirates yes. Airlines or something. I Bet you we could probably do like the decline of ninjutsu in the rise of Toyota and Japanese car makers, domestic <laughs> car makers in Japan. There's because probably too many. correlation. Attracts. Too Attracts. many. We're getting hit. <laughs> I think it's going to be a long graph. I think it's going to be a very horizontal graph. Yeah, I don't know. Japan. We're going to have to. We're going to have to dig into the cross tabs for the scientists to figure out. Alrighty, everybody. Well, um, let me see here. Making sure I got all my things going. And it looks like I do. You guys want to do some weird things? Yes, yes. Let's do it. All right, Andrew. I'll count you in here in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mead, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Hey. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Hey, uh, how about that International Space Station with its crazy Russian module and its thruster that just likes to keep firing? Uh, go on. So uh, Friday, the ISS uh, had a little bit of a surprise because uh, apparently they were just doing a test of the engines on board the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft. And then um, they are supposed to do an engine test and the thruster just the thrusters firing unexpectedly continued so they couldn't shut down the thruster remember we had the problem before yeah this is the, 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 oh, the same thrust- module that 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 never stopped firing and sent everything over like a a, a flip and a half right yep and it looks like i think it's the same module i think it's the same thrusters so so this um, has now been a persistent think- problem but it, the thruster shut down this time, though. Oh, good. I mean, but also probably because it ran out of probably because it ran out of propellant, and not because they were not able because to they were able to control it. <laughs> it just literally ran out of power. 
I'm so 100% down for the sci-fi original movie rogue Russian module <laughs> that won't stop firing and spinning ISS out of control, possibly into a volcano filled with sharks. I mean, if, movie. if you if you need no. if, if, if 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 Chernobyl was just like the pilot, this would be like a great late season edition of like Russian bureaucracy causing problems. The show, yes. I think this is no. This is not that. This is not the Naka module. This is the MS eighteen spacecraft. Yeah, they just said right there. Oh, oh boy, this so is a this separate is a, issue. Another thing. Same <laughs> I, problem. I, I just, different I just thing. had that moment straight out of the the Big Lebowski where it's like I sat up straight and I go, oh, separate instance. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like uh, this is a system wide problem we have. Uh, a a quote from a Russian mission control. Oleg, take it easy. The station was turned by fifty seven degrees. No big deal. <laughs> Hmm. Is that a real quote? I mean, I mean, I'm sure they said it in Russian. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, so what? A uh, half star off their Yelp review? Is that where we're at? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna say this though. Okay, they are one. They have to. The Russian space agency has to operate. And turns out, Russia. I don't know if you've heard about Russian bureaucracies and Russia. You know, yeah, all the issues of Russia Le and doing things in Russia. Yeah, legendarily efficient. Legendarily, yeah. uh, uh, well, communicative toward each other. But that being said, they don't have anywhere near our funding yet. Yeah, they, they are, they're, they've been sending rockets up nonstop while we've stuttered and stopped. Yeah, they've developed. You know, they. Space Station was built with part it's part Russian, but Russian modules on there. For the amount of resources they have, damn, they do good. Yeah, it's just it's Russian. It's just hard. Yeah, I mean, look, they're 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 in a they're in a difficult position. Uh, I think space in general is something that that is at a very interesting point. Not only because there's been a lot of American innovation, but also uh, I think Russia's default position of we're the place that still puts rockets up into the air. Uh, now is challenged, and so now they got to figure out what they're what they're doing. Uh, also, it's hard, right? The more the more we're in space, the more things are going to go wrong in space. Well, and plus, also, like there was one move that Russia always had, which was reliability. Yes, we're very expensive. Yes, we're very wasteful. Yes, we have a perfect track record, give or take. Uh, what happens when when that last part starts to erode? Yeah, I, I think that it's man, they've got some of the best, most talented people in the world is working with limited resources and a management structure that probably very political. And it is, you know, it's one of these things like I like why I believe in American exceptionalism. Um look at what happens when we take people from Russia and India and other countries that aren't as developed. They end up creating things like Google and running things like Google uh, Microsoft and doing these things. Like we yeah. benefited. You start looking at the number of Russian people, you know, children of Russian scientists or engineers who immigrated to the United States and created amazing startups and technology. It's a very big list. So clearly the talent's there. Clearly the talent's in Russia. Clearly the talent's in other countries. That's obvious. Um, but yeah, the structures. Yeah. There was a great YouTube video by Scott Manley talking about the Indian uh, Space Agency. Uh, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, and what they've been in their rocket program, what they've been able to do with you know, a tenth of our budget, you know, a tenth of that, and amazing, amazing what they've been able to do and deliver. They may be putting putting people in the space next year, and they've got some of their own innovative kind of rocket systems. Because I was looking like, wait, what's this? Like, oh yeah, this is a solid rocket booster. This is a steering motor, which we never, I don't think we ever played with like they did, like some really clever stuff. So, man, there's a lot of ingenuity out there trapped inside of yeah sometimes dicey uh yeah yeah systems that have a hard time servicing it and that's i think what's what's exciting now is that we've just seen a lot of progress right like like there's just a lot of things that have gotten done yeah oh. so are you guys uh uh I'm starting to run across more and more articles boohooing about like uh, all the light pollution coming from all the low orbit stuff that's happening out there. And I, I, I don't know that I'm the least bit concerned about it because 
it's like if we want to see really far away things, then we would use a space telescope that would be outside of that problem. And then meanwhile, backyard astronomy just gets cooler and cooler. I can't count the number of times that using the ISS app, it's been cool to count down three, two, one. Here it is. I'm like, oh, my God, we're seeing a building flying well, right over us. I mean, a lot of the complaint does come from actually backyard astronomers, but people are actually trying to take photographs of stuff of other things. Like it does have an impact on amateur astronomers because I think they're the ones that I don't know how much it impacts really what they're doing versus the fact that it's present there. Um, I was just looking at an electronic telescope the other day. That's amazing what they have built into there, like doing image stacking, stuff like this. Like I, I believe that for some people it's a real problem, but I also think that, you know, if between, you know, you know, my friend that blows, you know, $10,000 on camera equipment and a telescope to go take stuff. And some kids on an Indian res in Alaska who haven't had internet who get an internet. I know who I'm voting for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the kids in Alaska. Let me make that very clear. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I do want, I mean, and you guys probably be better uh, to, to answer this, but I do wonder how much some of that is, you know, people kind of bug hunting that like they're like looking to kind of take the picture of the satellite that is crossing across the thing that you want to, that you want to observe when, you know, you are able to kind of point a, a, a telescope at what you're looking for. Well, there, there's definitely the fact that like uh, uh truly dark areas, let's say, you know, I don't know, you're out in a ship in the middle of the Pacific or whatever, like uh, all of a sudden you have a bunch of new players entering the arena going yeah. here or there. Uh, but sure. doesn't that kind of price out amateur, amateur astronomers if, if we kind of leave, leave more of that telemetry to, you know, space telescopes or ships out in, out in the ocean? Doesn't that kind of price out the low end of people who want to see? It, it changes the focus. I mean, it's like a, a backyard <laughs> astronomists. Now your stories are more limited to, you know, kind of uh, uh, air traffic in, in the, the low Earth orbits. Uh, but then you also have the ability, as we all do now, for time sliced, you know, like uh, who'd like to take a ride on the Hubble for a bit? Let's go. What do you want to see? Well, you, you can't, but, you know, um, we will get there. I mean, but and you can rent, you can, they're actually the electronic like observatories and other places that you can rent time on, but it gets costly. I would say that the thing is the tools for backyard astronomy have gotten much better. You know, now you have a telescope that tracks, you take a series of photos. It is not hard, from my understanding, and there may be astronomers out there, correct me, it is not hard to get rid of the satellites, to ignore them. Um, but it is, I think, for some people, it's an aesthetic thing. It, it bothers them that, like, look, they're up there. I'm looking through my telescope, and now i got to see these, these Starlink internets providing service to people in rural areas. I guess, yeah, that, that would be my question. Is it harder to see the thing you're looking for up in the sky, the, the celestial body up in the sky, or to catch a Starlink satellite in your field of view? Because it, it sounds to me that it's more of an aesthetic thing that people are upset on two levels, A, that they exist, and B, that the fact that they exist and that this is a popular service means that this is a problem that will get worse going forward and maybe down the road you have a hard time trying to see whatever you want because there's constant interference from stuff in, in, in the sky. But I don't know the feasibility of that. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, uh, the International Astro Astronomical Union was calling for the UN to protect the sky from like Starlink satellites. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, I don't think there's a, I don't have a problem with people saying, let's make some recommendations like for research to minimize the amount of light. But literally when you're talking about a fundamental service to people, the fundamental idea of what internet brings and particularly something like Starlight, which focuses on people who are in remote areas, right? It is not a rich guy telephone thing. It is literally providing vital services to people who don't have it. I'm like, uh, the, the, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm overstating it to say, you know, that little thing called the ability to bring the sum total of all of human knowledge to the bottom billion, you know, oh, that little old thing. Is that the, the biggest uh, NIMBY argument of all time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't like the extra stars that do awesome dances yeah, like, when that... I'm trying to look at other stars that are doing boring things. Like, is that... Yeah, the... if it was... 
we and we criticized a bit when it was one of the space launch companies did their stupid disco ball thing because it was like which by the way i'm still a fan of i i, I thought of yeah. i know i was in the minority on that one but yeah we yeah we we, we were we had a difference we had a we had a discussion about like yeah is this but and it was temporary and fleeting but yeah this is not it's not you know elon riding in the sky you know doge to the moon which would be kind of funny if he found out he could change the orbit of the satellites. <laughs> yeah. Don't give him any ideas. All of a sudden, make it, Moon make it with an famous. arrow pointed to it. <laughs> like this Not way, an arrow, right? It won't be an arrow pointing at it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, I, t I sent a tweet, I think, to both of me the other day, which was, like because elon had said some silly tweet i'm like this is the richest man in the oh world. it was it was to the me richest man in the and world. it was it was uh, uh after careful consideration i will not apologize for party rocking <laughs> 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 richest man and, in know, the world like, the, probably sitting on the toilet board yeah. and then <laughs> just like <laughs> you know his beavis and butthead laugh and then decides to do this so uh yeah let's not give him any ideas good, good, good yeah yeah i don't think we need a a a, a shiba inu doge mascot <laughs> floating yeah. through the uh thirty through this guy don't give me that look brian uh, so, don't I give need, me that look he, we he don't we no a funny no, word. no no be funny i, I think no that, yeah i don't think we should be in the position of writing anybody off who says oh i don't care about your concerns i do think that like brian to your point like yes i do think it would be nice if we start thinking more about how how can we give better tools because astronomy is a key i love astronomy could we could we do it could we be thinking about more CubeSats and other stuff you know could we doing more to make it easier to do astronomy because now with this cheap access to space is going to be amazing astronomy is going to have because of spacex astronomy is going to be accelerated considerably with cheap access to space but, yeah and and i think that's a fine trade-off. Like, let's say, let's say, uh, you know, the evil genie shows up and he's like, good news, bad news. Bad news is uh, your skyline will only be more awesome. They'll just, it'll look like Coruscant. It'll look like there's traffic and things happening all the time. And you're like, okay, well, what's the bad news? And he's like, no, 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 that is the bad news. The good news is all of these can form together to create a planetary-sized a uh, coordinated uh, telescope and time slices will be available to researchers uh, all the way down to high schoolers. And uh, everybody's going to get to explore the world in a way that we had never conceived of before. And I'm like, Hmm, I'll think about your offer. Are you sure the evil genie, because you sound like a good genie right now. <laughs> well, but I, I do think that that's something where, and, and we have to draw the line between like what progress is good progress and what progress is a uh, uh, negative progress in terms of the idea of like, Oh, well I, you know, you would be telling your, your uh, uh, children's children like, well, you know, what I used to do with your mom it was, was watching groves like, as far as the eye basically. could see. And, and, and some of that is yearning for times gone by, right? And some of it is like, no, maybe maybe we did lose something. Maybe we lost there, something that was good. But, 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 but even and, then, we, could, we can hop on a affordably priced rocket and just... Just zip but, on up but, on a five hour but who trip. can, but that's not there now though. Like yeah, if you're, right. if, if you're an astronomer back, if you're amateur, like we've had a, amateurs have contributed a lot, discovering comets and other stuff like this. So for an amateur, it's like, that's great. I like that future, but I want to take my, my telescope in my backyard tonight and see something and not see, you know, this ring of sad, you know, like that's, that's their argument. And not to be my the dumb, slippery my dumb slope guy. Of it. Not to be the slippery slope guy, uh -oh. but even uh -oh. if... Oh, I'm losing footing. I'm losing footing already. Even if we think that the, the Starlink is a good trade-off, what about when it just becomes cheaper for people to litter the sky with advertisements and laser pointers and, and whatnot? I mean, we're, Brian we're talking and I about... see no downpoint side to that, so we're kind of looking forward to this. <laughs> I mean, okay. That, I mean, that, that I mean, that's 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 fine right, too. What's but, the line? But, what is the line I, for the most frivolous satellite that could go into the sky? What do we do? We have a basement. Like, if it's if it's just uh, it yes, it is the flashing pornography. It's, it's, the, it's, like, the, it's the global kiss cam. It's a jumbotron that just spies down on Earth and finds uh, people who are hanging out at local events, and then they see themselves, and then they have to kiss. By and the way, everyone goes. Ooh. Can I just say this? Uh, went to a hockey game last Thursday. <laughs> Shockingly, the kiss cam 
not unlike Michael Myers, has survived through <laughs> Me Too. I have no idea how in our modern age we're, the, the, the kiss cam is still around. Although they did eliminate the one time that uh, was like, you know, now probably doesn't look as good where they would always find the two dudes who were rooting for the yeah. opposite team and put them on the kiss cam. That's gone. So that that got cut. Uh, but See, that's the real crime because that's bringing people together. That's crossing all kinds of cultural divides, both tribal and, I, and <laughs> sexual. Or it's I, or it's just I, LOL. The other team is gay, which is usually where yeah. the laughs came from on that one. I I went back to the whole. Yeah, Scott sorry, thing. sorry like, about can, sorry about the kiss game. Yeah, that's okay. cool. Sorry for party uh, rocking. Yeah, you could you could imagine like really crazy scenarios. Like you could take some, you know some lumin you know photo lumin chemical luminescent gas or something like that and have a laser right in it and do crazy stuff um ever look at and this is just a really interesting science fact you ever see like if you watch google if you look at like our, the image of earth like on apple tv or whatever you see this really good and you see the outer layers of the atmosphere and there looks like there's a glowing force field yeah you ever see this yeah yeah there's that like yellow like this is yellow band and I'm like, I'm looking at that one day. I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Like, what is that? Why is this just like, there's like atmosphere. There's like a little tiny yellow line. Is this like an artifact? And it's a sodium layer. It's an actual layer of, of sodium atoms that get charged. We're looking at it right there. So that's what that is. It's actually kind of like sodium lights that glow. Like, like sodium and arc lights. What, yep, exactly. So it's an upper layer. That's a boundary layer where there's a bunch of those sodium. And, and infinitesimal amounts of them, but enough that charged particles will cause huh. them to glow. I always read that as just a, 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 a version of the northern lights that you weren't really able to see very well. Uh, that's you know, that's, that's, that's ways, remarkable. But it kind of like that, Brian. It's, a, it's just an upper atmospheric charged particles. Yes, but it just covers the entire... Hmm. Uh, uh, do you want to know what covers the entirety of this show? Oh, my God. Your financial support at patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah, that's right. Look, we have a celebrity guest here, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson joining us live right now. Well, what's up? <clears throat> it's me, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. I, I understand that I'm traditionally Neil deGrasse Tyson. You, you have a lot of problems with uh, yeah. some of the physics in movies. Don't like them. Yeah. I don't really like movies. Yeah? No, I'm more of an opera man myself. How, how, would, how are you like in your relationship with yourself, though? I, uh, I find inner peace whenever I go to patreon.com slash weird things and help donate to the show. Now, wait a minute. What is it that makes that so special for you? Well, I uh, see science dictates that uh, if you go to patreon.com slash weird things and, yes. and you give them uh, your hard earned money, then they continue to make a show each and every week. Also, oh. I get access to the After Things podcast, which gives me all sorts of insights, tips and tricks and, and uh, uh, otherwise opinions on how to be an independent creator, which is what I am. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's wonderful. How do we, how do how do I follow in your footsteps? Well, first you 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 turn off gravity and write a tweet storm about it. <laughs> and then you go to patreon.com slash weird things and I'm, donate I'm to the podcast. I'm just gonna skip to the second part. The second nope, part sounded better. If you better. wanna be like me, uh you if, know what? Maybe I just wanna if be If you wanna be my like lover, you. you gotta get with my uh, friends. You know what? Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to patreon.com slash weird things and subscribe to this very podcast. That's why there'll only be one of me. Ah, throws oh, a smoke bomb. Classic star talk. Sorry, I'm just ordering my AirPods three. Oh, okay, where were we? <laughs> um, uh, I I'm like, mine they're working fine, but I just can't live without them because how I listen to all of my favorite things I like to hear in my ear holes. So, AirPods rule. Like this, I, I haven't seen like the new. What's you know, what's the new? Is just more battery life or? They're new. Yeah, got you. Okay, so it's uh, new. It's all new. They're so saying it's the thing, third generation. The third generation of AirPods. They have the new design and the spatial audio and wireless and. Oh my God, Could you sound more bored as you say this, Bryce? Do do, do they it run longer than ever and faster? A longer battery life. It does actually. Ah. <sighs> anyway, what a what a what a refreshing change of pace. Minimizes wind noise. Yeah, that's pretty crucial. Yeah. 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 All right, All right. that's that's. For AirPods. Your AirPods are good. I Air like AirPods, especially in space. Especially when all that wind space. comes at you when you're in space. Fire comes at you. 
Space wind. All right. Sorry. Don't mean to digress like that. All uh, we are is space in the wind. Um, so where are the sun- these AirPods? Where have we been? <laughs> There's a, a, again, that was a really good substitution song for the Highlander TV series when they couldn't use the Queen song. So they used Dust in the Wind? Yeah, that was Dust in the Wind. Oh, it was great. They'd like, oh, wow. you know, Adrian yeah, Paul be walking yeah. away with Richie into the sunset after having to murder some uh, whatever. And then, all we are, are is dust, dust in, in the, the wind. Oh, my, it's pretty cool. It's like, this works. A bunch of severed heads again and again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Adrian Paul could have been like the, the best poor man Sean Connery ever. So, Man, put that first line in, in his obituary. <laughs> Yeah. The greatest poor been. man, Sean Connery. Yeah. Sean it's Connery great. Ever. It's great. The guy could have, should, should should have been in every movie. It was amazing. It was, I, mean, like, I love the tight TV show for Highlander. It might have been a more yeah. flattering obituary headline than Colin Powell got. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Uh, so there's a plat- project. Uh, NASA is working on a project to try to identify rogue planets we've talked about these before these are just free-flowing libertarian planets that just keep <laughs> going where i'm like i don't need no solar system that's right the feds alive <laughs> <laughs> they're about as popular as 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 rotating libertarian rogue planets yeah the new hampshire planet um so basically rogues are uh planets that got sp- Flung out from their host stars for, could be for a variety of reasons to do that. There are some theories that suggest there could be more rogues or almost as many rogues as there are actual planets, which is kind of, you know, amazing. And yeah. so the idea here is they're looking at gravitational lensing to look at the idea of one of these planets goes in front of a star and then using computational models, you know, machine learning models to say, I think there's something there. Because that's what we say when you think about space. It's not like you just got our, our eight planets and our abandoned orphan planet, Pluto. Uh, and then the next star system, there's stuff, there's the Oort cloud, there's the Kuiper belt, there's all these other objects out there and possibly just drifting out there in between. Well, there could be also planet X or whatever. There could be another planet out in our solar system, but then all these rogues, which kind of amazing. So selfishly, I, I I immediately want to consider like okay how many of them are Europa like where they're covered in ice and have geothermic vents and possibly supporting life or whatever um, I probably should let go of that life centric uh, view of the universe but uh, but having said that how many of these got space shrimp. Maybe like we we don't know like that's a, it's a great point because Brian as you brought up as first people like oh these cold lifeless planets we we're like what like uh, their their cores their molten cores all of a sudden stopped functioning like no like they could have they could have uh, I don't know I don't know how much time they'd have to spend in a sort I don't time to get ejection whatever but there could could be life on these things you know there could be squids and stuff you know there could be sort of things below an ice cap or whatever like yeah you don't. Turns out you don't have to have the sun. Okay, so so very very unlikely scenario, but not zero. Uh, you have a rogue planet. It's big enough, uh, and it's got a big enough warm zone that uh, you got all kinds of critters, uh, the, the likes of which that we like to fantasize are on Europa or uh, that are similar to those who are. Uh, experiencing chemosynthesis uh, near geothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean or whatever, um, it's unlikely that there would be a need to establish conscious life. But let's say you got there. I, I don't know how they would channel heat to bust out of the surface, much less how they would create and forge objects that would allow them to get outside of the planet but uh but 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 i'm up for the challenge of speculating wildly on on what that might look like Uh, do do you have anything in that regard andrew or 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 is that or is that just too too a a bridge too far i you know i just finished my new Theo Cray and Jessica Blackwood book and and the idea of an alien signal comes up there. And so then I get to have Theo Cray, you know, computational biologist start to speculate on stuff. And the thing that he points out is that if you look at the number, 
you know, the number of stars in our galaxy, right? And if you say, you know, if, you, if you're approaching, let's say, a, you know, let's look at what's the current estimate of number of stars in our galaxy is. Um, I right, got to be more than 25. 20, Maybe 100,000, okay, 100,000 million stars, okay? Um, so 100 billion. Oh, what did I, I get the European version? Yeah, 100 billion stars, <laughs> right? So if you look in... Uh, it, by the way, for the record, I'm a big fan of 1,000 million over a billion because a billion is sounds too close to a congressional budget or whatever. But when you say 1,000 million, like I know how many a million is, 1,000 of those... All right, okay, now that, that's, yeah, that's a lot, a big that's a lot yeah. of hooch. Yeah. But we get an estimate between like 100 and 400 billion stars, right? Now, if you say on average, probably the prediction now is, is probably every star probably may have planets. Cause like everywhere we look, we tend to see the, to find them. Our closest stars have them. So we got to say there's probably on average three or four, I mean, there's probably multiple. So if we say there's a trillion, or let's say there's, you know, let's just say there's a few billion dwarf planets or excuse me excuse me a few billion rogue planets going through there yeah some of them are going to have geothermal some of them are going to have had geothermal you know for a while some are going to have water a tense enough geothermal the idea that life couldn't develop would seem unlikely to me given that you know we only have data about how us existing once which is you can't really extrapolate anything from it because if one fluke, that fluke is going to go, what are the chances of me? Well, we're here. Well, you're the fluke. You get a look at this, but you know, I think it's, you know, I always want to say squid, it's got octopus, octopus, squid. It's going to be octopus and squid. It's just, it's just the universe is octopus. So, well, so, so stop the fed from printing stars. <laughs> <laughs> I, my my question is, uh, I I could wrap my mind around rogue rogue planets essentially being space eggs that that carry uh, 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 thoughtful uh, DNA or life uh, in them that smash into planetoids or break apart and then shower their DNA all over the place, essentially seeding an Earth that could lead to a primate like environment. Um, I suppose the harder challenge for me to square the circle on is the idea that uh, that while in a rogue state, they can reach a level of uh, intelligence and awareness to know, hey, we're on a floating space egg and, and we're, we're going to come within this many miles of a planet or whatever. Like, 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 I, like uh, for example, like, I don't know how you would develop lens craft underwater or, 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 or develop various well, types of metallurgy or, but, mm. but you know, you, you oh, think about human the, perspective, Brian. Bruce. <laughs> yes. I'm glad somebody who speaks my language. <laughs> okay. So think about this though. Um, or how do you learn drums? Yet we saw it in Aquaman. It's, it's possible. Doy. Look at, how do things do that underwater now? You have mollusks, you have creatures, you have things that develop shells, you have you have uh, maybe some forms of tool use, whatever. It would be different. It, it, it may not be metallurgy in the way we do it, but it might be resins. It might be other sorts of things. But there, there might be something to the idea, though, to get that one of the components you need for that kind of tool use is you have to change your environment because we became really good tool users when we left the jungles and went out in the savannas. And our tool use increased when our environments changed. You know, the best tool users in the oceans are probably your dolphins or your porpoises that used to be land mammals, then went into the ocean and developed their brain power they had developed on land to solve land problems, then gets applied underwater and they do clever things. And so, so maybe you don't get that intelligence without a shift. Even, even now, though, uh, I can picture, let's say you've got a rogue planet and this is me chasing a wild hair i apologize but 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 if you had uh let's say a more ant light uh, ant like colony um you you could uh travel the warmth up in 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 uh, basically take the warmth from the depths and use it to drive a bunch of individual pinholes like all over the planet to where then the entire planet uh, uh, essentially you have an, an entire cast of ant creatures or whatever that, that act as scribes and then they compare notes and they're able to create these 
compositional images where it's like now all of a sudden you have a, a, the entire planet becomes an eyeball that mm. that that looks um but that doesn't... you could you could you could start once you go down a path you could start to think about uh, what if you were using dna to communicate to other creatures do you say okay i can make rna or i can spit off some rna that whatever that communicates my experiences and my stories to something or just a protein sequence i'm going to make a protein chain you're going to get it and it's going to function kind of like a little computer tape to you and you're going to be able to get information i have you could think you could start imagining a lot of different scenarios where information can be exchanged and then tools how how could you you know do you go straight to biotech do you go straight towards getting uh, you know do you have enough can, if you're doing if you're if you're a species that can do that you're like oh well, i can create rna spit it into these microbes and have them make me some plastics yeah uh and likewise um if you have uh if if not a singular intelligence at least a a colony you know planet planet-wide colony all working in tandem then all of a sudden you're able to do stuff like, you know, like, uh, hey, let's shift the weight of the entire planet to one side so that we start spinning and flopping, you know, to to correct for our uh, uh, orbit as we come in. But I mean, that's like, like you said before, the idea of understanding your role in the universe is something that is, you know, uh, uh, that's that that's a high bar to clear, right? Yeah, but you could make a pretty good case that that humanity has already done the impossible in that we now we now rely on math equations that rely on particles we've never detected, but we've mathematically deduced must be there or interactions that 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 have to have happened or whatever. So if we're able to do it, then maybe other entities would be able to as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that's assuming that we're, we're on the right track, right? We, we, we are on the right track as far as we understand it, but I mean, we have, we have long right. understood. And, and, and uh, to be clear, I am aware that in order to play this game, we have to set the difficulty bar to the lowest rung possible. We, we are playing on very easy mode, very generous, you know, possibilities and all that stuff. But I don't know. It seems, seems like, like, uh, uh, something could happen where if, if, if a planet could perceive where it was, triangulate where it was headed, and just like a, a space telescope, rotate various parts of it in order to affect its gravitational pull, it could on purpose swoop in and just slide into another solar system is let me cut in here right when, when the, and then at that point it's like now let's set up a signal it'll take 10 20 30 thousand years eventually whoever the local bipeds are, are gonna come say hello we'll do that dance and then we're gonna eventually i, I don't know co 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 cohabitate this solar I, system long-term so storytelling you're, you're trying to like, change the wobble enough to change that because like you, you have like a solar system escape velocity, so you could change your wobble a bit, which might, even then it's going to be your mass, it's going to be hard to affect it. But there might be other way, like, like the amount of stuff that gets blown off of our upper atmosphere into space and picked up by solar winds. If you had, if you knew that, let's say, okay, our sun is going to be keep kicking off a tremendous, you know, geostorm, and we're going to be blasted with radiation, this sort of, but we could maybe like, get a bunch of our little particles up in there and do some sort of pan smearia thing. Sure. Uh, sure. Was... sure. Well, and, and, uh, you definitely could, let's say you had a source of heat at the center, you, you, and, and again, if you have a colony hive mind, you could take that warmth, bring it up to the surface, have it blast out. And then, and then uh, essentially as a propellant to bring you you're, in, you, you're, you're not, the, 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 the challenge is you're not going to reach escape velocity. So that's not really going to, it wouldn't really change your orbit, because it's still going to be that, that mass is going to be there as far as my understanding of it. Because if you're not, it's like the international space station is still gets part of the net earth gravity. Right. Right. And so until it leaves this, but, but, but to on that, in that thinking though, like imagine when we had an asteroid impact 65 million years ago, it sent it stuff hit the earth. I mean, it hit the earth and stuff from the earth went off and reached escape velocity. So if you take advantage of, let's say asteroid impacts, you, you could then capitalize on that. And so there is there's some really interesting research from Japanese researchers that showed like B-52 
because the Earth and the solar system makes this journey around the solar system and since the or since around the galaxy and since the Earth got formed, it's done this like three or four times. That and this happening like or how many times since it happened 65 million years ago? Like they show the swath of the Milky Way where Earth bits of Earth could have reached, which also means other planets have reached us. Some of the stuff that's fallen on the Earth is parts of other planets, not just Mars, but like extrasolar planets. So right. your hive and, mind and, can and, make it out and, that way. To be clear, in my in my musings, I was picturing a, a truly rogue planet that wasn't really under the influence of any one gravity. But oh, okay, okay, okay. not nah, these poser rogue planets. Jeez. Well, but, but, yeah, but, no, um, okay. imagine that 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 some kind yeah. of sentience came online while just you know in that oh, infinite okay. void of you know. Between. Yeah, they they could, they they could just try to control like old faithful, you know, and like. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's great, Brian. Start writing sci-fi. <laughs> I should. For our audio, <laughs> for our audio listeners, Brian just has this Charlie Brown Brian, sort of Brian, kind Brian, of Brian was just crushed by the weight of possibilities. I know. He just, he just crumpled I under know. the pressure of possibilities. <laughs> Let's do some picks and explore some other possibilities. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Succession's back. Succession's back. It's so good. It's, it's good. great. Action stations, friends. Because, Action stations. Uh, yeah, everything that you love. About succession, name calling, a bunch of people doing rich people things. Uh, uh, it's all there for you. The season is a big civil war in the Roy family, and I'm very excited. Kicked for off it. hot. It's, Kicked off hot. It's great, great episode to start everything off. So uh, go download this new app, HBO Max, and uh, <laughs> uh, go enjoy it. Yeah. Uh. I'm 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 gonna I guess I'll double down on something we've talked about before. Um, lower decks just gets better and better. Uh, uh, last week we had a wonderful moment where Bryce was trying to describe why this particular episode was so good, and I was able to explain Bryce. It's because you are now a fan of Star Trek, and he was like, <laughs> "No, <laughs> uh, not uh, co entirely coincidentally." I did not watch Lower Decks this week. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, but yeah, but uh, especially last week's was really good. Was this week's good? I did not. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give it a second watch. Uh, I, I, I've actually rewatched last week's a second time because it was so good. It's it's so canonical Trek. Uh, uh, everybody out there who thinks this is a comedy show where Trek is the butt of the jokes will not have a good time. Everybody realizes this is straight up legitimate Star Trek uh, uh, around TNG era, uh, but just happens to be self-aware is going to have a blast. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, I realized we forgot the most important story of the week. Oh, speaking of... Star Who Trek. didn't die going into space? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Willie, oh, Willie. Although, although, first thing he did was start picking a fight with Sulu. <laughs> or did it go the other way around? Yeah, Love yeah, right. Look, uh, 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 now we know that pettiness can survive space. Uh, uh, between yeah. the two of them, uh, boy, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, no shortage of egos. But uh, oldest man in space. Let's is let's literally focus on William that. Shatner. Let's focus oldest on oldest man that. in space. It's William Shatner, Captain Kirk. We're in a simulation. I'm convinced. You can't it's, talk me out of it. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, you know, it 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 really to me. I think that this this is a moment <laughs> much much in the way that Tom Hanks getting COVID was like a a a, wake a, up a point uh, in which people were like, oh, this is not just a, a thing that's on the back page. It's not a Zika. It's not like something that you're vaguely aware of that doesn't really affect you. If, if Forrest Gump is getting this, then, then I, I got to watch my six. Similar to, uh, uh, you know, a Shatner going up into space. I think that there, there is a line where it's like, oh, like he's not a kajillionaire. He's not a captain of industry. He's not somebody that wanted to be and was was likely to go to space at some point because they trained their whole life. He's an actor and an old actor at that. And yet he went up and came back and had glowing things to say about it. And that's, I, I think that there's an element of that that is really, really uh, powerful, at least it, with, with the understanding that it lowers the bar to an average person to think, oh, I'm probably closer to Captain Kirk than I am Jeff Bezos. 
And Did you see? We, oh, uh, we, 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 we've all rolled our eyes at various moments about the nature of like exactly how high up they go, blah, 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 blah. But, but one thing this really did is like, if hypothetically we all, you know, rub the scratch off lottery ticket and suddenly we ha can afford one of these, uh, I ain't going to go on the one that is attached to an airplane and then just, you know, kind of hop skips in a jump up to the Carmen line. I'm going to get in the one that is, uh, looks and feels like a real rocket ship. Well, Brian, good news is you won't have that choice for at least a year because Virgin uh, Galactic has basically like suspended their flight operations for a year. Is, it, is that good news? I would say no. that's, yeah. No. In general, very rarely good news when a thing stops happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that was because of the variance they, no, they got a clearance on that. Like they, they finally FA said, okay, we're, we accept this future flights going forward. Don't do that. Um, here's, here's my opinion. Um, by the way, I am not a rocket guy. Uh, but, that design was based on Starship One, which was designed to win the Ansari X Prize, which was, hey, you have to go up twice within like a 24-hour period or whatever. And basically, a solution was is they took a very giant Estes model rocket engine, shoved it into a really clever design for an airframe, sent it up, came back down, basically replaced that rocket engine, did it again. It's not was never, although it won a reusability, it was never really designed to be a real, yeah, truly reusable system. It was, it was a model, it was a model vehicle. It was a concept it is car. 20 years old. It is yeah. now 20 years old. It was old. a very old learned, concept car. <laughs> yeah. We've learned a lot since then. And they, they had momentum. And remember, this thing was supposed to be flying over a decade ago, flying tourists to space. And I think that they got locked into a design paradigm and a method that I think was a prohibitively expensive to do because the new Shepard, you know, criticized we want that, you know, it just, it's an amusement park ride that goes up and comes back down. It's reusable. Just put more fuel in there in theory and yeah, go again. I, I think it's, you know, if, if it shows you how far the public uh, uh, expectations and discourse on this has shifted, the conversation we were having is, is William Shatner healthy enough to survive a trip to space? Not, is William Shatner about to die in a fiery explosion because this rocket's going to blow up? Or is, is, this going, is this safe for him to do? Is this safe for humans to do? It's been happening enough that it was like, oh, maybe grandpa will break a hip and not like, is this inherently safe enough to be putting a national treasure in it? Right. Uh, and that's um, that, that's the, a, that's a that's a material shift. The the thing that's sort of funny was that, you know Bezos has this routine when you come back down he comes with a champagne bottle to celebrate and you see the video Shatner comes out of it and he's just stunned just stunned and he's trying like telling Jeff like I, it was the most and Bezos like oh champagne woo and Shatner's still like I I'm. I'm just in space, you know. Yeah. You see, <laughs> you're looking at like a, Bezos, and his wife, and like, Ooh! and Bill is just over in the corner. Oh my going, god, yeah, having an existential like, crisis over un, there, un, un, unable to even look him in the eye. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, I, like, I'm sorry, I need a moment here. Yeah, I, it was just you're you look at this guy over there, and he's profound, and he's like, like, I'll take a hug, but you're like. It was just, he's like processing it. And he's it was, over there he saying like, uh, you know, I never had to face the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> I mean, like, if we can get a little existential, one of the things that I have noticed the older that I get is that age and wisdom is the increasing absence of the new, or at least the surprising, that there are... You've, you've gone through enough things, you've, you've been through enough situations that you start to realize that there's a fairly reliable and predictable pattern. And I'm in my late 30s. I can only imagine, because he's, he's in his 90s, right? Was he 91? 90. Nine, 90 or 91. I can only imagine that a man who is uh, uh, of that age, there ain't a whole lot new under the sun for, for William Shatner and William Shatner's day-to-day -day life. I can't imagine that somebody at that stage of his life gets to legit experience not only something new for him, but new for 
the the, the world. vast majority yeah. of the Humanity. world who's who's ever lived. That's that has to be a profound. I, I can I can understand why uh, uh, he's he's sitting there looking like he saw a ghost while Jeff Bezos is like, oh that yeah. I mean it was pretty cool the first time I did it. Also, you want to buy some books from my store? <laughs> yeah. So, hats off, amazing moment and cool. So anyway, let's continue on with our picks. Yeah. Uh, I've got a pick. Pick it up. Uh, I've got two of them here. Pick it up. Okay. Pick it up. Um, uh, a, a very brief, selfish one. Uh, marbles started on Friday, and it mm-hmm. was super, super fun. Uh, we're gonna do them more on. Most of them are on Fridays this season. Marbles.win is the website. Check it out; it's a lot of fun. We're doing a lot of points. That'll be fun. Uh, my my pick um uh, is uh, something that they just added to Netflix. Uh, I, I want to say within the past maybe few weeks. Um, and it's it's weird because it's I don't think this is how it's ever been packaged, but they just call it Oats Studio, which uh were these uh separate short films that were made by um uh, this is neil blumkamp's uh yeah, yeah. D- independent uh, studio i district believe district nine yeah um uh, and so there are a lot of short um uh i, I want to say they're 20 or 30 minute uh, uh stories and there are a lot of science fiction um uh kind of genre uh, concepts you know um and and a lot of visual effects is the other thing you can very much tell is they they spend a lot of time on uh making all of these creatures and all these Practical effects and visual effects look really, really cool. Um, so I, I, they, they're on Netflix now. So um, yeah, check it out. Oats, Oats Studios is what it's called. They're, it's it's interesting. Did, you, did anybody ever actually see these? Because I remember I, I we reported want, them a while ago. I wanted to see them and I always forget it because of the name Oats Studio. <laughs> like yeah. I always like, I remember, didn't Bob Goldquaith direct one or something? Or uh, maybe I'm mistaken, mm, but like sure. I I, I want to watch this because I think Blomkamp is a very clever guy. Um, mm. But I just that name is I always forget. Yeah. Wait, can, can you make it like uh, uh, crazy aliens or uh, the, uh, get, get out of my face, space creature? Yeah, yeah it's space like creature. it's like duck, 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 go. Like the other day I was trying to remember, yeah. like, is duck, duck. How do I find this website? And like, <laughs> like, again, I'm sure it's a great technology, but the name just always I forget mm. the the only the only thing I'll say about them, and I've only watched a couple of them, and I think there are a few that are connected plot wise, but a lot of them are like they kind of they seem like pitches for a sh- for a movie or a series. So you kind of get all the excitement, and then and then it kind of just cuts off right yeah. when you think they're about to do like the big thing. So that that's a little unfortunate, but but they're very impressive and, and they're nice little. I wonder if that wasn't exactly what they were. Pro- probably, probably. Um, but uh, yeah, that's on, on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, Studios. I, if Bob had nothing to do with it. It's just that the logo reminded me he did a movie called Go- Wolf Willow Creek about Bigfoot, oh, which had this yeah, like yeah. scary looking foot. Oh. Oat Studio has a scary looking hand. That's yeah. like that. Just show you how dumb my brain is. It just connected <laughs> the two. Um, so uh, pick. Uh, I would say there's a great selection of comedy on Netflix. I suggest that you check out some of the newer specials on Netflix. I think that they're very interesting, and I highly recommend you check them out and come to your own conclusions about them. Most careful landing of an episode ever. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think that uh, there's a lot, a of, lot of different stuff out there. It's great. I'll say this: I finished, I finished season two of Ted Lasso. What were your thoughts on that? Uh, I have not finished it yet. I think we were positive on it in spoiler in time. Yeah, I I, I think that in it's a general, transitionary season. Uh, we as as humans have been spoiled by uh, Empire Strikes Back into believing that second acts need to be the best ones. Uh, they traditionally are not. They need to be the inverse of the first one so that they could create tension going into the third one. And uh, uh, by the time this one ended. I, I felt like they landed it. Yeah, I think that everything I thought like two episodes in was going to how it was going to end is how it ended. That yeah. that was my sort of thing was like, ah, and this is the trajectory we got here. This is this. I'm going to watch this. And and I wished, man, you should just brought this up sooner because I think it set it up better. That was a little frustration for me was that um, I think it's a great I think it's a, it's a lovely show. I would say that. Uh, I am more convinced than ever that actually we're watching the fevered coma dream of a man named Ted Lasso, who is a uh, unaccomplished football coach who tried to kill himself after his wife divorced him. And now he fantasizes 
realizes that he's, you know, coaching soccer in England with his magical best friend who beard, who gets all of his jokes and everything else through that lens, everything makes sense now. Cause some of the absurd ways things like there was a lot of absurdity this season that, uh, yeah. you know, I kind of, I, I, I kind of go like, go ahead. no, if you finish your point, no, 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 please, please. Uh, I, so I'm not to the end. Um, but you know, the, the, the thing that made that first season sing, especially in a show with relentless positivity, was that there was the existence of kind of outward negativity that you could kind of understand. Uh, and, and there seems to be, you know, a, a, a you know, that, that, that first plot line with, the, you know, the warring players with Roy Kent and, and Jamie and obviously the animating... Uh, you know, the, the, the straw that stirred the drink was was the owner lady, you know, wanting to hudsuck her proxy, uh, Ted Lasso. And so it's like, there's a lot of that where there was like legit bad things that you understood from the very beginning that you were excited to see this relentless positivity kind of conquer. And this has been a little bit more of an existential season. The, there's There's a lot more of like the enemy within as opposed to, let's conquer this kind of uh, bad behavior out that outwardly. And I think that that's, that's kind of um, taken away a little bit of the steam of the show that, and also the fact that it, it's just kind of like a workplace comedy. Whereas, you know, especially since the first season had the idea of like, I'm trying to ruin this team. The sports were the, 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 the big driving thing. Like we will know if this plot line is resolved correctly. If Ted Lasso is a good and competent football coach, uh, and and everything's been very removed to the point where it's like whether the team kind of wins. At least to this point that I've watched it, whether the team wins or loses is just kind of like, oh, we, we don't really know. It maybe they'll win, maybe they lose. Words I never thought I would ever hear myself saying. I wanted more soccer. <laughs> yes, I agree. Because I think part of it is like that's like doing a a show about uh, a show about being in an indie band or being uh, uh, in in advertising and then not having the scenes where they come up with advertising uh, uh, jingles or or wrote new songs or had humiliating situations that were out there. It's like that's that's what defines the world. Uh, is is you us exploring that, especially at, for an American audience? Yeah, and there were there were characters. Who I, I think I cast is amazing, but we had storylines about characters. Like I don't care about this because I could just follow some other random person going through the storyline because it doesn't relate to the story of this team. Yeah, and then there's I won't get to where it ends, but they set up a storyline for a character at the very end. Like I don't care. I don't. I watched part of that journey. And, and my frustration, I get, of Ted, I think Ted Lasso is neat, but the problem is Ted Lasso is one degree away from Ned Flanders. And it is, I know they have to navigate that, but it was like kind of the crisis he had to deal with this, this, this season was just like, all right, just pull this out of the crisis box. We got this one to deal with. Cool. Yeah. Forgive, uh, forgive blank, move on. You know, and, 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 I also don't know a lot of the stuff that's coming out now. How much, how much do we put into the, you know, like all those seasons that came out of the writer's strike or, or other big cataclysmic situations where uh, there was like a lot of challenges in, in making the art. Uh, I think all the stuff that came out now that was shooting uh, while or, or writing being written while COVID was going on. Like, I don't know if there's, if there's a, a degree of difficulty there where like maybe third season comes out and there's, it's a little bit more traditionally put together and you're like, Oh, that's what an in-person writer's room does at least for this show. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, okay, just kill off Roy Kent. Let him go play a James Bond and then just carry on. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's my biggest thing is that, Boy, were there a lot of characters that lived happily ever after at, at the end of the first season and then just kind of like kept living happily ever after. <laughs> My favorite thing with this season was is that Sam, the soccer player, who's great, a charming, super likable, what I think would have a great casting choice. And there's like, hey, I don't want to represent this company because they've, they've, you know, they've 
bought off by government in this pollution thing. And like, we're going to make a stand against this company. I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting to see what Apple TV goes with this. Yeah, right. Next episode, a oh, new sponsor carrying right along. I'm like, right. I feel like something was missing there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you're waiting for the content. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Like, what do you do when your player gets very political and has political points of views? Because that's topical. That's a really, and there might, this could be a great lens to explore this that, that, we don't all of a sudden go to whatever side we're already on. No, there's Apple it, TV it, guys. No, we're not. We're not going to because it also would have given the season a big bad, a big bad that was yeah. existential, and and now you have to make you know you have to put your your characters in positions where they got to make hard choices. But look, I mean, but hey, the, hey, banter, tech saved everybody. We're all good. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, I guess the, the other thing is that like there are some shows where it's like yes we can have these conversations about stories and characters and everything. But for a lot of people, you watch the shows for different reasons. And it's like walking dead is a great example. Doesn't matter what these characters do, what these characters say, somebody's <laughs> going to have to walk into the abandoned warehouse alone. Uh, uh, and, and it's going to be a dumb reason why they get in there. Zombies are going to be in there. They're going to escape by the very end. And that's what people like. They like just the, the promise. The promise is in the title walking dead yeah walking dead and this is ted lasso is he's gonna be jason sudeikis it's a great character he's fun to be around even if the the, the story isn't isn't great he's gonna conquer something he's gonna give somebody a pep talk and that's it that's 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 why you're there although i do wonder why they didn't save that christmas episode for christmas like wouldn't that have been the 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 the, the, the slam dunk because it's so disconnected from everything else like just put that out on Christmas Day. This, uh, this uh, was it worth it? <laughs> I mean, but, but I think, when, when I think, are special I think Christmas by, episodes by, ever by, worth it? By the uh, uh, as uh, I'm talking to somebody who has not yet completed the season, there would be incongruities that would matter. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and yeah, I think there is. I, I think there's probably some weird like, well, the soccer season crosses over Christmas, so you can't end the season there if we want to watch the whole season but also season I'll, I, I will say this much uh, i'm so down uh, anytime anybody in austin wants to go see soccer i'm i'm in i'm i'm, I'm ready oh well i'll yeah. tell you what maybe we got to do that that was fun last time is that it gentlemen it's been weird hey I don't have a heart out at one. Oh. I just had a meeting move on me. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, we're going to take a break and come back with After Things. Yeah. Yeah. Right Speaking of soccer. Mm, Justin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Got, they, I got burnt. You got burnt? I got How? Burnt. Buddy of mine, we were gonna we were gonna watch the Austin FC game. Austin FC on Saturday. I go on TV. Or are you gonna head down? We, we were gonna watch it on TV. Okay. Right. But we were gonna stay in because it was an evening game and yeah, well, whatever. Um. So I and it's MLS. So I know yeah. ESPN Plus has MLS. Oh, easy. There we go. I don't I don't have TV, so this is perfect. I'll give them eight dollars, and I'll watch this. You know. This game. Bad game. You will have the access watch the to watch these games. Yeah. And yeah. I'll be doing it right. You yeah. know, I'm going to be, because it's difficult to find sports. It happens a lot with football. Yep. I can't watch my Chargers really here in Austin. They're not really. Um, and so, uh, so I buy it. Yeah. And then I'm on the phone. It's not showing up. I'm on the Apple TV app. It's not showing up. Yeah. I click on it. Ooh. Oh, this is not available in your region. They black, blacked out. They black out MLS games. So wait, was, is it on a local channel? <laughs> it was on. It was on the local CW channel. So I had to, I had to run out to my car to get a paperclip and jam it into my like coax for my TV because you can do that for an antenna, um, and then like do all the digital channel scanning and stuff because I'd never done all of that either because I yeah. don't. Um, and so we missed the first ten minutes of the game. <laughs> well, that's only lightly burnt. Lightly burnt. You were toasted. You it, weren't burnt. It, it, no, sure. But I. it was the thing of that 10 minutes where like my buddy was there and I was like, oh, 
crap. Oh, I thought I had this. In nothing's lock. nothing's worse than that. Right. Nothing's worse than because I'm thought. on the phone. I'm pulling out the iPad. Where are my Russian streams? Where am I? But MLS <laughs> is so un is not popular enough to be the Russian streams. Yeah. So, um, no, no, that's that's the worst. If you like have people over for a pay per view and then you're like, oh, this will be easy. I'll just I'll just have to buy it. And then it's like, like, oh, you need to blah blah blah. Please sign in triplicate. And okay, JC Calhoun says the problem the game was free instead of having to pay for it. No, dog. I a I still had to pay for a service that I will not have any other use for. Um, and it like. Just that 10 minutes of being like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if we like. Well, no, it was it was over the air, right? It was over the air, but I wasn't. I didn't even know that I would be able to do that. Like, yeah. Like it was to the point where that was we were, a, that was a hail mary. He was like, hey, I have an antenna over at my place. We could just go over. Yeah. We could go to mine, but then at that point, it's like, oh, well, and then we're gonna miss the whole. Th I gotta uh, get a. I gotta get a little antenna thing. Yeah, and they're uh, cheap too. They're only like. 20 bucks for like a decent i wonder if i actually get because i, I kind of got burned by it because the, in the in the old apartment that i was in it was so it was a brick building so mm. it had a really hard time getting that signal yeah but if you do get those signals those signals are crystal clear it, like the it was HD pretty good is insane yeah uh i i had never done the paperclip thing before i had only heard that you could do it so yeah. i i was just kind of uh you know going by the seat of my pants just Jamming it in, not really sure how far, and if I'm supposed to bend it, whatever, as which is always We've really all a been Saturday there. night at the Castillo <laughs> house. And uh <laughs> Bend it like Bryce. <laughs> uh but uh but otherwise it was alright. And then because it's soccer, there's only there's only ads at halftime. Yeah. Or there's commercials at halftime, so could have been worse. It Did they win? Uh no, it was a one. A zero to one. Mm, who'd they play? Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota United, and the big, the big Houston game is this weekend. Oh, probably. really? Yeah, and I think that's here. That's I think, I think that's here. They have a San Jose game in between them, but I think that's here. Mm. Uh, let's see. Jesse Gunn says, "I saw this video on YouTube about how to make an antenna for free. A current scounter or something? Oh, interesting. I mean, the paperclip, the paperclip seriously worked. I mean, if I only let it scan long enough to find something, yeah. I could scroll through through the channels and stuff. But it ended up, it ended up working all right." I see. Says you can build a good antenna with nails, or is that nails, wooden wire, yeah, or just a pair. When I was a kid, I would make like a crystal radio set, but I'd take it to school, and we'd need to ground it, so we'd just plug it right into the light socket, like in the gymnasium. <laughs> I mean, try to put it in the electrical socket. I'm like, huh. man, this is amazing that I I survived. Huh? <laughs> Kind of, that was I took sick. an electronics class thinking it'd be a bunch of these like, you know, electrical engineering type geniuses and stuff, but it was the kids that like they didn't trust in shop because they were with <laughs> saws and stuff. And my favorite moment ever is this kid, his name, like Hardev Sapel, great name, uh, takes this, he had some, he had an electrical project where he had to make like an electric clock, but he had this, just the cord and then the, the empty cables and the empty wires. Just so we went from wires straight to the electrical plug. Ha. Our teacher had this counter and had his big metal, big metal green thermos he'd bring every day. And Hardev just walks up, plugs this in, and we're all watching this in slow motion. Like, what is he doing? He plugs it in, takes it, looks at the end of it, and goes, bam, touches the metal thermos. He goes, bam, crack. And the teacher's the other side of the classroom helping somebody over. He looks over there, and Hardev's like, ah. <laughs> and he's like, just, just sit down he walks over to his thermos and we're like do you touch it whatever he picks his thermos up and there are two electrical char marks and you can see his look on his face like this this is this is my class this is my legacy yeah. these idiots are what i'm responsible for and i just remember that like hard having like this kid was so that was so i would say it's stupid but i'd probably do something similar so yeah. it's a stupid thing to do and just that like what was your in your head? What what was the outcome of that scenario? That's amazing. Uh, J uh Justin, wow. did you need a break? No, nah, let's go. Okay, you guys are ready for after things? Ready. All right, Andrew, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Mead, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hi, Mr. Brian Bushwood. Aloha. 
Mr. Bryce Castillo. Third skeptical greeting. <laughs> Intriguing. Mm. Go on. So I, I've, I've been doing a deep dive. I'm going to do, I do a plug for this. I do not get compensated by them and by their current latest uh, funding round. They do not um, need my help. Uh, but I do Udemy courses all the time. Mm. And there's actually another flash sale going on right now. That's the secret, by the way, to Udemy courses is that you'll go there like, oh, it's $99 for this course. Wait a day. It'll it'll go down to like 12 bucks or 13 mm. bucks. Yeah. My, my experience has been is, every other Udemy course you buy, you can get at like a, like one of these crazy sales. Like they've, yeah. It's a co-signing. Yeah. I'm and co-signing. So, yeah. Yeah. And they like, they'll do, and sometimes with these courses may have existed somewhere else than people bring them here to Udemy. So um, I, I learn a lot. I learn a lot. I learn, you know, that's when I want to learn a topic, I go do this. I might take two courses on the same topic, one after the other, just because different teaching styles. So lately I've been learning about Ethereum. Oh, so that's been fascinating. you're on, you're on, you're on the chain. You're a chain How gang. much do you all know about Ethereum? Do we just want to get Corey in here now? Like, and, and yeah, I know, you, guys can, you guys can just go back and forth like I, Furbies. I, 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 I'm. Well, we think about it from the as a currency, and that's yeah. the big talk. Is the Ethereum is a currency side of it, which is fascinating. But it's but it, that's the side that was not attracted to me. It has a, a a what like a work value side, right? Or like it it represents a certain amount of computational um, cycles. So it was started by a 19 year old kid vitaly uh buterin uh who basically was interested really really into into bitcoin when he was a kid really into bitcoin but realized like man there's so much more potential because he was obsessed with the idea of smart contracts and the idea of being able to do work that was decentralized and so he proposed and got other people on board an idea of like what if you could build basically let computers do work for you and do computation and create these smart contracts that could basically be agreements between people could do this. It could be doing certain kinds of computation. So the smart contract thing was a thing that attracted to him. And when they do these like Ethereum conferences, uh, he, a couple of years ago, they had one, they talked about like an Ethereum had reached this, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in value or whatever. And he's like, did we earn it? Have we helped people who are unbanked, you know, be able to get bank accounts? Have we really replaced any of the systems that we're trying to replace? And he's not into the NFTs. He's not into that speculative part of it. He's into the idea of this technology being a thing that could, you know, the Web3 aspect, a way that yeah. just decentralizes everything. And that was inter interesting to me because I look at, you know, as we build these services on top of stuff and we become dependent upon a few small players, the idea of people trying to build systems that aren't dependent on that is a very interesting concept. Can so, you, yeah. Can you, can uh, you, for, for, for folks that, that might not be up on, on some of the jargon, explain the idea of, of web 3.0 in terms of, of what, what the so, blockchain represents? So the idea is that, you know, web 1.0 was sort of like, I have, there's the internet, I go use my computer to do it. Maybe I look at a browser, but you know, things are sort of like, I'm using my applications to connect to the internet. Uh, web two was kind of like cloud-based stuff. The idea that you're using the applications like Facebook and stuff that are on servers and stuff. And you do that. Web three is the idea that, you know, things are completely decentralized. So for example, like your information about you might just be stored, you know, in a in a, uh, a distributed way that it could be on a block. You know, a blockchain is basically a bunch of different computers that basically anybody could participate and be able to store or use that information and you pay them something for doing that. But the idea is that no one person controls it. No one person controls the data. No one person controls, you know, the ability to do it is you just you can add another node to the system and you'll be able to connect to it. And the idea is to get rid of any sort of centralized system because then in theory is uh, Facebook can't control it. The government can't control it. It's really just a bottom up individuals doing stuff. And you get people who come from very radically different points of view. You get people who are very, you know, uh, maybe anti-capitalist, very pro, you know, uh, you know, points of view, like socialist sort of points of view. And you get radical, you know, anarchists and libertarians who come together who are like, well, we all agree, like, big banks are a problem or this or that could be and stuff. So I, I think, I think it, um, it, it, it tends to represent philosophically an element of anti authoritarianism mm -hmm. uh, that, that goes beyond just government. 
right? That 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 now yeah. we look at our modern world and you see like, okay, well, depending mix and match, who do you find to be the biggest villain? Like government, either by actors or by philosophies, uh, the economy, either by actors or by philosophies and big business or like financial sector uh, uh, stuff that that you know you keep your all of your money in one place and that one place can like go away. Uh, uh, so this is is a representation of taking away that central power. That that what if you had all of the 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 positive the the positive elements of something as trivial even as like Facebook. So you're always able to find your photos. You're always able to share and talk to other people, but it didn't come at the cost of running everything through this one company. Yeah. And in a, in a, in a ver and I think we're way off from certain versions of versions of this, that you're, you're, you could have different people that are, you know, competing to be able to store your images or your whatever stuff data that you want to store and it's accessible. And if one of them goes offline or whatever, doesn't matter, you have it and they're cryptographically protected. You can build applications that run off of the system. So you can build, you know, the way Ethereum works is you have a thing called gas, which is a price that you pay to do a computation. So I could build an application send it to the network. And then anytime somebody wants to use it, they pay that network to run the application. Now, how efficient is that right now? Whatever. Those are things like, I don't know. It's very early, early stages, but it is an interesting. And to the crypt, to the currency side, like to me, that's less interesting to me, but that's where the focus is. But that's valid too. I, I'm reading this book right now called The Infinite Machine by uh, Camilla Russo, who was a Bloomberg reporter in Argentina. And she starts off talking about how she was getting paid in Argentinian uh, currency, and then the economy started, and she could always convert it to U.S. dollars. And then as the economy started to falter, she tried to put it in U.S. dollars. Then one day, Argentina said, no, you can't do that anymore. And the option in her bank account went away. She couldn't press that button to convert it to USD and just watched all of her money just completely get deflated to being worthless. And so, you know, that was, you know, kind of the idea of like, oh, well, had I been able to, and that's where a lot of people got interested in blockchain and crypto and protect that point, Bitcoin. Cause like, in like, I think, I think Bitcoin is a lot of dark money, a lot of shady, shady, shady money, but it is also a lot of people who are like, Hey, I don't know if my money is going to get devalued in this other system, but yeah, that's part of it. That's not as exciting to me as what you can build when you literally, you know, uh, get away from the point of view of like, nobody can, no one person can control it. So as you went through this course, what was the most surprising thing that you found out about Ethereum? Well, I, I, to me, it was the idea that the, 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 the origins of it's fascinating. So this Vitaly Buterin started this uh, idea because he thought about what if these things could do meaningful work. And he brought a bunch of people together and he's 19 years, 19 years old at this point. Um, and when he, when they, they started this group to form Ethereum and there was this big, a lot of people, a lot of people are opportunists and, and I see people you know, making comments in the chat about Bitcoin being this or this. I think it's a lot of things. There are idealists and there are schemers and there are tons of schemers there. And that's, that was the noise that kept me away from it because the schemers and the scammers were really, really loud. But Vitaly was a, an idealist and they were at this point where they're about to do their initial to offer, make Ethereum available. And they had a CEO who seemed, some of them didn't trust. And finally they said, we need him out, Vitaly, you have to decide. And at this point it's like 20, they asked a 20 year old kid to decide what's gonna be the fate of this thing. And he's like, uh, because we're, are we gonna be a for-profit company or are we gonna be a non-profit? Who's gonna run it? And he says, we're gonna be a non-profit and you're, we're gonna have you know seven core people be the decision makers and that's it. He didn't, he didn't run to try to create the next Facebook. He didn't want to do this. Yeah. He believed in the platform itself and said, no, we need to be a nonprofit. We need to make everything open source. And it was a very interesting, again, the original nine people worked on it. They profited from it. They made money from it, but it was a very mature decision from a 20 year old idealist. And that's what impressed me the most about this. And there, I think there are a lot of people in the periphery who didn't share his ideals. And even still, I think that it was a very interesting sort of point of view you know, from that, to see that, that idealism. And I respected that. And then what I've heard, I've talked to people talking, I'm like, yeah, no, he, the NFTs, all that's, I think NFTs are neat, but I don't think there's a real long-term value in selling JPEGs like that. I think they're, the things that come next will be cool. Like million dollar homepage, of those you remember, that was like yeah, this sure. joke website. Yeah. yeah, that turned out the, the internet was bigger than that. The internet had yeah. more potential than that, but that wasn't, if you looked at that and go, well, this is why the internet's bullshit. Like, well, no, that's the wrong thing to look at. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, the only thing that NFTs did was show that there is a market for digital collectibles. Like, and, 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 and the, yeah. And that there's a ton and ton of people with cryptocurrency assets trying to diversify them even to really crazy things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think that was, that was a good, that was an interesting thing, but I, I, I do agree with you that uh, now that we've proven that, the things that will come afterward and aren't just mm-hmm. the, the, the lazy, uh, the lazy kind of cash grabs will be interesting. And, and a thing that, you know, you maybe heard me talk about Corey, Corey before was like, the problem I have like with Bitcoin is that it's an extremely inefficient the amount of energy it wastes to produce a Bitcoin. And you know, some Bitcoin, like, no, it's not like, no, literally the paper was called proof of work. Proof of work is how you create one of these, you know, you generate a coin and the work means the energy. You have to expend a tremendous, that was by design, expend a tremendous amount of energy to produce this thing so it has value. But Ethereum is based on that, but now they're switching to what's called proof of stake, which is the more coins that you have gives you a stake. And so these things are evolving. And I guess my my is to plead to like, hey, uh, one, I'm going to recommend the book, The Infinite Machine. And two, like, look deeper into these things. Take a look at these things. There's a lot, there's something really big going on. I don't know what it is, but I think there's something big that passed all of the douchebag speculation, all that stuff, which kept me away from it is that there's a lot of idealists and very involved technical people trying to push this. I think that blockchain tech, where we are right now, uh, similar to AI, is a, a situation where like the World Wide Web was in the late 80s, early 90s. Like, there's a lot of people that had a lot of really stinky takes <laughs> on the World Wide Web in the, 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 you know, throughout the 90s that now we look back on and we laugh at, at how out of touch or alarmist or whatever that they were. And there were some people that had, you know, a, 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 a bigger horizon in front of them and, and tried to guess where these kinds of things were going. Now, I don't know whether or not it's going to be the exact same scope of the World Wide Web, which has effectively reshaped our lives. And this is a, a, an offshoot of itself. But I, I do think that uh, we could all do our best to maybe challenge our priors on situations that are evolving really, really, really fast. Yeah. I mean, that was, I think that was a lesson that I sort of learned was, was to try to, and again, I'm not like, everybody go buy crypto, crypto. I'm not, I'm even talking about really crypto. It's just the idea of this, this platform that I'm still trying to learn more about and trying to learn about building things onto it. Cause if you imagine the idea of like, Oh, what if you could build applications and things like this, but you didn't have to go to AWS to do it. You just go, I'm going to use, this open platform that there is no gatekeeper to upload it and it exists and nothing can stop you other than the scale of it or you know and it can keep growing and that's what is what is you know we talk about what's the internet going to be like a thousand you know 100 years from now i think it's going to be this very decentralized system yeah uh so. well i mean it's certainly all, all, all the stuff is there as the question is you know, it's only as good as the uh, applications built on top of it and then the reliability of the system going forward. Yeah, I comments there about buying. Again, I'm not talking about buying. And I, I was very critical about like Bitcoin back in like, you know, like 2016, 2015 and about Bitcoin because I just have issues with it and still have issues with it. And I'm like, oh, but don't you wish you bought? I'm like, well, I bought Apple and Tesla. I did okay. You know, like I just, for me, you have to understand, I don't, where, what, I want to understand something, not just chase after what somebody says. Oh, go do this. Yeah. You know, so. Andrew never did the Macarena. Not once. It's like, I don't like no it. Don't no, why? It. Because he couldn't understand it. Yeah. He said, where is that? This get is it. clearly leading to something. Don't get it. I, not I, do Joe, it. I didn't buy Facebook. Facebook had their IPO. <laughs> I followed it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't really like it. I'm not really comfortable with this. I think it's going to make money, but I'm really not. And at that point, there were a bit of a mess about where they're, how they're going to be, you know, make money. But like, I just, I'm like, nah, I'm just not going to do it. I don't, uh, don't yeah. get it. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, for everybody wondering why I've been largely quiet is because I don't understand it and I don't feel like I should chime in on things I do not understand. <laughs> Doesn't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, Brian, understand I, the question and I won't <laughs> respond to it. And I, well, Brian, I, I think that uh, I would I would love for you to listen to the book The Infinite Machine when you get a chance. I would say check that out. Okay, because it is a really because because like. 
we have friends that are around us that they're the same people I knew who got obsessed with day trading, you know, and the same people I know who are, you know, online gamblers are now about crypto, 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 and they don't know a much about the underlying tech is a thing I do. They're, they're looking at candlestick charts and stuff like this. And I'm like, that's great, but that's not why I find it interesting. And it can be off-putting. It can be off-putting to me because I'm like, this is not, this is not, I don't identify with that. Well, and you know? uh, there's the difficulty of knowing that there's something here, but, but it hasn't achieved its final form yet. And, and mm -hmm. we saw it like, uh, like uh, the first time. You know, uh, uh, first time I ran a BBS, the first time I plugged into the internet and got on Usenet news groups, the first time I ever saw a web browser or whatever, like, 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 okay, yes, but not just this, you know, and, and that's how I feel about uh, everything blockchain, everything Bitcoin, all of that stuff. And, and so mm -hmm. it has me very hesitant to want to chime in, even with rampant speculation, because I don't feel qualified in that regard. I, I I would say that, yeah, I, but I mean, I, I am, I am excited about the potential of like decentralized stuff and to get into the, their ideas that are really cool. Like they talk about the, the DAO, which is like the decentralized autonomous organization. And the idea that you could create a contract, like we could do our podcast and say, okay, every, you know, we're going to split it up four ways, the profits four ways and put X amount that's going to go into an account to pay for services. And we're going to make a smart contract that's going to do this. Brian's address, Bryce's address, Justin's address, my address, this is going to do this. Every time we release an episode, it'll go on this website. If people want to buy it, they will use this again. Not a very practical method right now, because I don't think many people are into crypto, but the idea is that you could build an organization or a business like that. And that's exciting. I think that would be exciting to you is the idea of where you look at like, oh, what happens when that's automated? What happens right. when you could just write this we're, to do this? Where essentially there is no contract and therefore there is no contract disputes because everything happens organically, automatically on in public on the blockchain where it's like, uh, uh, yes, this was yeah. the founding charter and it's continuing to go exactly as we declared it would. Yeah. And you could, if somebody pointed out Adam Curry's podcast, you pointed out has a Bitcoin tipping system. I mean, you could go further than that. And the idea that we say, okay, Bryce has to upload it. And so the moment, you build. You could build a smart contract onto Ethereum that basically every when you send a file system to it, something happens, and then it could say, "Okay, this all of a sudden releases payments." Now this thing happens. It gets into like that's a thing that sort of blows my mind. You start thinking about the possibility of like how you, building a business in soft, like literally building a business in code. Yeah, I, it, when 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 Curry's been on Great Night, he and he talks about the future of what's he, what what he wants to do with it and what's what's possible. It is a lot of 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 stuff like that of being able oh, to bet. just build he's, in. He's so far ahead. Yeah, like trying to build in the idea of like, all right, so if somebody sent him art because they do new art for No Agenda, that they can just be on the ledger and so whenever anybody listens to x amount of that episode if they're on on his system then it automatically pays out to everybody proportionally and like just just trying to uh, uh create a a different system where you're constantly earning and spending in this in this ecosystem uh and that wealth kind of gets uh, uh distributed and makes it easy for you to plug back in and so you are it's easier for you to give uh, a wealth back into it. So I, I do think that there are some fundamentally amazing things that can be done with it. It's, uh, you know, I, 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 I wonder for the, the, the app that, that cracks it, that makes it really dirt simple. Yeah. You know, they, they, the analogy that was made was that, uh, what email was to the internet like Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies are to Web3, you know, the idea that yeah. that's the thing that starts it, but then everything else gets into it. And I, and I would say that like, it's, you know, everybody's still figuring, it's all but so new. Everything's figuring out so new. It's like, I've been learning this programming language that I didn't even know existed a month ago called Sol Solidity. And Solidity is a programming language just to write contracts on Ethereum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wow. It's like, great. But because they looked at like, oh, they originally did it in C++ and Python, but like, no, we need to have a thing because we need to have a constructor, like a contract, like instead of classes, you have contracts and this happens this. And so, and like, oh man, this is really interesting because when you write this code, you press a button and it gets deployed to, to the, the blockchain. To the blockchain, right. yeah. 
And then that, that means uh, there's no need for lawyers to argue about percentages. There's no need uh, for, for judges to interpret what, uh, what is or and is not a Browns. Or... Reporting, disbursement. Right. Like, it, yep. it, the, no, no accountants. It's no. just, it's like, it's, it's, it's all inherent in yeah. the thing. That's, that's remarkable. And that's, yeah, and it's, and it's early days because it's still, you're like, well, who decides? How does this work? And I'm like, don't know. And there's going to be problems and things, but it is like, to, like, I think it's a very exciting idea, Brian, you know, like that, yeah. like you said about like that, because then you get into like wrapping your head around, oh, how would I build a business this way? Because like, you think about like you, you know, you and I, wrestled, we've all wrestled with like, you know, just on your podcast, you bring in partners to do this stuff. And I... And when I did magic, I wanted to some, I wanted to be a publisher, but I'm like, no, like I don't trust the magic publishers that I work with that I'm getting my percentage. And I don't think it's necessarily because they're bad. I think it's just accounting gets sloppy. And I'm like, man, I, and if, if you said, okay, here's a system where every time a book gets purchased where people contribute to it, you don't worry about it. Those yeah. percentages go out to the people and that's accounted for, et cetera. I'd be like, oh, cool. And you know, maybe a percent goes into an insurance thing in case somebody sues you or whatever. But like, I think there's so much more things we could do out there. So many more things would be possible. You know, and it's not even just a matter of trust. It's a matter of just fluid making things just automatic. I, I think it, 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 look, all systems are predictable. And so therefore all, all systems on some level are gameable. It's not to say that, that anything is inherently immune from sleaziness. What I do think is interesting about a system like this is that it makes an honest broker's job easier. And if you are, and that I do believe is the vast majority of deals that get done. And uh, uh, I think, you know, as small business people, uh, which you know, all of our pursuits were started not because we loved organization, but because we loved art and because we loved our passion and because we had goals. Uh, that means that the bookkeeping uh, is something that is annoying. It's frustrating. It it oftentimes is anxiety riddling. Uh, uh, to 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 deal with. If that could be done for you automatically. My lord, what, 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 what an awesome, uh, 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 now, uh, ability for you to have more cycles and thoughts and, 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 and everything that goes along with it and not have to worry about, oh man, did I forget to do a thing? And like, uh, have I not gotten paid from this person on time? Have I not paid on time? Like, uh, uh, also the idea that all of the agreements would have to be done beforehand when you go into something as opposed to setting something up and then having the awkward conversation of exactly well how much does everybody get out of this if it just starts out saying hey i'll do it blank split blank split blank split and it starts coming in that does make an honest broker's job a lot easier yeah and it's it's early days and it can be it can be really really intimidating a lot of the stuff but uh you know, my, my, my sort of, you know, I would say that it's like early days of the web, World Wide Web, where we just, there was so much dumb stuff out there. It's like, there is a big future. And I think some of it's watching some of it happen right now, if you see through the noise. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. Again, I, I, I love, like I said, love for you guys to get a chance to read the book or check. I'm still in the middle of it, but just follow that sort of story because it's. Uh, I got pulled away one more time. The name was. The, the Infinite, Infinite Machine. Machine. How an army of crypto hackers is building the next internet with Ethereum. Written and it's just, by it's a good, Russo. again, I'm still only a third, I'm only a third of the way into it. But when I got to the point of understanding, you know, the why, yeah, uh, I'm like, oh, okay, this. And so, and like I mentioned before, is like Ethereum's moving from proof of work, which is like, use your computer to burn energy to make these hashes to proof of stake, which is, hey, uh, way more efficient and stuff. And, and there's, there's issues like it takes 12 seconds for a transaction result. There's a lot of technical stuff, which I won't get into. And, and I'm not saying, well, this is it, everybody. But I'm like, there's something happening. Yeah. <laughs> Newsflash, Andrew Maine says of the crypto space, there's something happening. Something happening. I mean, that's the most frustrating thing is like, yeah, we all agree there's something happening, to, <laughs> but, but but we all disagree that anybody knows what and and, and well, and, we nobody knows though. But it's like it's like that's remember my favorite one of my favorite stories, two favorite stories about Facebook. One is 
Zuckerberg's in his code house, you know, they're, they're, they're coding, they're working on building a version of this, you know, they still haven't taken like any funding or whatever. And they're working on this going, man, this could be such a cool system. This could be so cool. Maybe someday, we'll, somebody, somebody real will go build this one day. Yeah. And, and they were like, they were working on it and they didn't yeah. see it was them. And then my other one is, you know, we, you watch the social network and whatever, and that story, the, the, the parody of what happened, but you know, he walks into, he's going to go pitch the VCs and he talks to, I think it was Peter Thiel and Zuckerberg had two ideas. Everybody talks about fi- Facebook. Nobody talks about Wirehog. Wirehog. Wirehog was his whole, wanted to do his own system for exchanging files and music and everything else he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to do. He's like, he, he loves them both. And they're like, or he goes to even pitch them. He like tells the, the VCs about there's like Facebook do Facebook, do right. Facebook. And the whole idea of the, oh, we wanted to, like, no, that's every, every, every creation story somebody tells you is a myth. So, um, yeah, Wirehog, there you go. Uh, that's amazing. It, then, and so nobody knows. Nobody knows. No. There's, this is, Ethereum is the second most traded cryptocurrency. It's worth like half a trillion dollars. It was started by a 19-year-old kid. He's still like 25, 26. Uh, over the hill so uh, i i I know we're coming up on deadlines uh uh, for my pick i'll admit slash confess slash lay myself in front of both of you that i continue to watch foundation and continue to enjoy it i also started watching foundation i think it's really cool and it's great it's great i ain't watched it you should it's good hey stop Ah! Get off my ass. <laughs> Do what I want. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I... This went exactly wow. the way I feared slash hoped. No, no, I, no, let me, I, I, I'm on I, your side with this one, Brian. I, was, no, but I, I haven't read the book either. It's all right, Andrew. I don't care. I mean, I, 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 you could, they could take the names. I don't, I don't, that, that doesn't bother me as much as you probably think it does. Like if you're, oh, they changed the thing. And the, I'm, I'm not. But in the box. Well, I am, I am like, man, you threw away something really awesome. I hope you have something cool to do that. And I got past that. I'm like, I just want to watch a cool sci-fi show. But now they've committed, I don't know. I'm like episode three or they created like one of my greatest sins, which is. Meanwhile, 100 years earlier, they literally did like a, like a, hey, uh, yeah, 400 years ago. Yeah, they do flash For one back scene. Now we're back scene. here. Now we've jumped ahead. I'm like, I just tell a linear, you could tell a yeah, linear story. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have that same allergy that you do, but I understand that. It's that one scene was story. very weird. It was very weird to see 400 years ago and then 400 years like that like just logistically is just, very confusing on what that means I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't imagine i don't i haven't seen it but i just imagine you doing it but it's 400 years earlier but it's just a family guy gag <laughs> <laughs> Kinda all Peter, right. you That's gotta weird. establish yeah. the foundation yeah, what about exactly. the time you met the pope hi pope yeah <laughs> it's like somebody pope. tricks over a crack and it's like <laughs> i wonder how that got there stewie like and then 400 it's, years earlier and it's peter Kerfer with a beard falling over it's more like that than you realize because it's like remember when you had that idea i'm having the idea idea. (laughs) 400 years later yeah the thing he introduced to us the very first show oh yeah no we we're we're with it so i i will stick through it i'm trying i'm making my way through it it gets the, the the way in which things unfold and watching some of the oh is this guy is he gonna be bad guy or good i'm like i'm just I'm letting it tell its own story. Yeah. Uh, Those little. The the one thing that that I do know for a fact is not in the original book that I really enjoy as a conceit is the uh, uh, the self cloning uh, dawn dusk. Uh, Cleon. Uh, Cleon. Yeah. Cleon. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm. I, he's, I, which, he's. I'm told he that is. Seems a, pretty cool. I think Justin or no Andrew. I think you said this as much a week or two ago that that character is very 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 small in the book. Um, well, it because it, it's it's. But I I like him. I think he's a great. I think that would be great in a David S. Goyer science fiction series. I think that what they substituted to me is, is sort of like what they, 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 you know, what they wanted to put in there as their institution of power sort of to me is like, man, like that's kind of like, I'm going to tell a story of the Soviet empire, but they're not socialist. (laughs) You know, (laughs) they're like, okay, okay. It's another empire. Like, all right, it's, 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 
interesting but again i'm glad people enjoy it it got renewed for season two i was not like no i'm like oh cool i i want i josh friedman by the way is the co-writer on co-creator josh friedman did the fantastic sarah connor chronicles is also working on avatar the new avatar so he was like a big fan of josh friedman so i'm i'm and who knows too i don't know what to blame because like (laughs) you know you gotta make you gotta make stuff you gotta make stuff for like Uh. i can't imagine what it's like to make stuff for apple or to have to jump through all those hoops for those execs i don't even imagine so yeah a lot of great production design too, and I think the casting's great. I love the casting. You'll bring, you get a new character and they're in there for a minute. I'm like, I like this person. I don't know why we have visions in a science fiction series based on Isaac Asimov's foundation, but that's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's not an element that he would ever use, but that's fine. By the way, sounds while, very while, confident. While, while we're on renewal and cancellation news, all right, more like why not? Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Very, probably not a good sign to cancel your show mm. while it's still airing. Uh, yeah. Oops, uh. Well, I, I I wonder how much of that, how much of that is uh uh, uh the the that news didn't come from FX. Uh, right. It I came from a. It came from the showrunner. The showrunner who says now, they're going to shop it. I don't think that um it is uncommon for shows to get canceled while they are still airing. In, in television that happens all the time if not it the the regular uh, uh thing especially for a show that expensive where you need to uh, uh be planning for these you know these companies need to be figuring stuff out you know if not a year in advance uh to really get everything together uh but yeah interesting that she went public or that was that was the plan uh, to try and and move it somewhere uh but we, we we were talking about it a little bit in the Discord, and someone had suggested that like maybe it was because there was controversy, or that this in the vague realm of say another comedy special that came out recently that people are upset about this. But I don't think anybody knows yeah, that this show exists. I think that there's a controversy. It was boring. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, I made it to two episodes, I think. I mean, it's, yeah, same. All right. I actually liked it. I I, right. I I watched an episode that I liked. I don't know whether it was the fifth or sixth one, but it was. Mm. It took five or six episodes for me to like like an episode because they were actually doing things and there were like interesting things happening with like some of the elements of the show or the comic that I really liked. Um, ultimately, I think that it missed. It 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 took a very of the moment view of the idea of what is a world without men, and it felt like a show where everybody was talking. Well, what would a world without men be like right now, before all the men leave? And I think one of the elements of the comic that was not there, and and is that like if half the world died, the other half of the world would really miss them. And yes, there would still be conflicts and yes, there would still be a society to sort through. And yes, you would still have all these moments where you would see these industries uh, that were devoid of women that now had to be totally comprised by women and how that would how that would go about and the geopolitical ramifications. But it's hard to do a show messaging, you know, hard to do a show like Handmaid's Tale, which I think that this show is very much based on some of the aesthetics when there is an apocalyptic world where I think the the pervasive element of the core of that story is, boy, would we all miss each other if we died? If if if, if there was a gigantic extinction level event for for you know one segment, any segment of 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 society, we would we would probably wish that they were here, uh, as opposed mm-hmm. to thinking about everything that that sucks. Um, without excusing it. So I think that was, that was ultimately that also it was boring and the <laughs> cast was not great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone chat. else? Shut up. Shut up. Chat. Inappropriate. Uh, yeah. uh, any other picks? I'm, I'm doubling down on foundation. Foundation's good. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, I finished. What if I loved what if, Oh really? what if, uh, uh, I really, really, really dug it. Uh, I think if, if, if I'm going to rank, the of uh, the four Marvel shows that came out on Disney Plus, uh, I was, WandaVision to me was awesome. I loved, loved, loved WandaVision. But what if is right there? Uh, I thought it was really competent. It was really fun. Uh, it was a a great tribute to the What If series, where where oftentimes you were just reminded, uh, hey, 
uh, the the comics you're Be reading thankful. are the best versions of yeah. this story because it doesn't end well in this in this other more tantalizing kind of idea. Um, yeah, it was just it was I, I never turned one on and and was upset by a a decision that they made plot wise. And I think oftentimes that's the biggest sin you can say about animation where you're removing a lot of the barriers of the stories that you can tell the characters that you could bring in at every moment. What if was jam packing Marvel goodness into these very fun, competent stories. Um, yeah, I'm still just halfway through it and, but I loved it. AC, I think it's AC Bradley. I think she's the showrunner for it. And I think not since the Russo brothers, if I felt like, man, these people get, somebody gets like what Marvel can be and what really great Marvel stories. I'm I'm real excited to hear your take after you finish the the whole season. And there were things I was about to say, but I won't say them now because I want to hear how, how you feel at at the end of the whole run. Cool. No, your Brian's like, no, you're going to hate it. Andrew. That's why I want to see you cry. (laughs) What if Brian spoiled? What if (laughs) this is like a reverse spoiler for me. This is a big deal. I I am the watcher. I (laughs) tried to cut Brian off when he's about to inadvertently spoil things. I want to put, I've sworn an oath to never do it. (laughs) Jeffrey Wright up into national treasure status, like Christopher Walken. Yeah. Uh, James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman, uh, Orson Welles' voice. But like, I want to put Jeffrey Wright up there. I just want to like, let's, we got a treasure, national protect treasure. Him, protect him at all costs. Yeah. Uh, watching, you know, he remember he was in the James Bond movies, you know, played Felix Leiter. And uh, it just like, man, I would love to see like a Jeffrey Wright in Bond universe, but as like a spy master kind of guy. Yeah. Because his, his, his gravitas is just off the hook. He's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's not uh, that old either, so. Um, I'm down with it. I thought it's I thought it's great. I love that they got the voice talent that they got. I love the decisions that they made. But uh, I, I am also excited to see, uh, uh, Andrew, what your thoughts are, because uh, it it is, I think, much like WandaVision. What I love the most about WandaVision is that it kept building and surprising me based on the pieces of the puzzle that they had already laid out, unlike Loki, where... It was like, oh, let's walk into the unknown. Let's walk into the unknown. Let's walk into the unknown. And we just kind of keep getting more unknown. Uh, WandaVision was a puzzle to be solved. What if is something where uh, uh, even in an anthology series, they, they find really, really cool ways to continue to build. Cool. My pick, um, and I, I am going to, by the way, uh, I have not watched the rest of the season of Lower Decks. I've been not trying to race through it because I love Lower Decks. Lower Decks is the best Trek since Next Generation. Agreed. Yeah. But yeah, because it's just, it's, it loves Trek and it doesn't go into that dumb uh, Star Wars detours. Yeah, it's because it's, it's canonical, in my opinion. It's, it, it is like, it's, it, it, it is not a comedy show themed around Star Trek universe, it is legitimate Star Trek. That happens to be self-aware. That's yep. it. That's and yep. and and having said that, uh, like w- once, like I, uh, once that framework has been handed to people, I've had people who are like, I do not like this show. I was like, watch it through this lens. They're all like, this is wonderful. And, and I'll give you a lens to be like, imagine you worked at SpaceX and people talked about SpaceX, and you know who Elon Musk is, you know who Bezos is, you know all the players are. What are going to be your workplace jokes? How are, what are you going to talk about? Yeah. You know, and if you imagine if you work for Starfleet and you've had, you know, you live in a universe where Picard is real and Kirk is real and all these amazing first stories are part of the stories you tell, like we do about World War II, like we do about this stuff, it's going to look like this. Yeah. And particularly if the people who become, want to join it are super fans of the history and the lore of this, it's like, yes. Like, do you think NASA is like, you know, uh, you know, Armstrong, who, what, what? Yeah. I don't know who this is. Like, like, no, they'd be aware. They'd aware. Like, they may be a little hyper aware, but it's, it's not. I enjoyed Picard. I liked Picard. Um, Discovery is not for me. I've tried. It is a kind of storytelling and structure. It's not for me, but Lord Dex is great. I'm excited about Star Trek Prodigy coming out because my friend uh, uh, Bonnie is going to play the uh, voice of the robot on that. So I got to see, see what they do with Star Trek Prodigy with Lord Dex. But here's my pick. 
you're not watching Lower Decks, you need to be watching Lower Decks. Lower Decks is phenomenal. The other underrated thing that people like that doesn't get enough attention, but is probably the greatest comedy show there is, what we do in shadows. Yep, 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 yep. yep. I'm only 15 minutes into the first episode because I don't want to just race through it. And I'm just like, it's just so Oh, so you're good. just starting season one. Oh, how I no no, no. season three. Season right? three. Oh, season oh, this three. season. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Season good. three. Yeah. No, I was I was team season one. For okay, you. okay, okay. Oh gee. But uh, yeah, I like how Bryce is trapped in this cage right now and uh he lets him oh, I'm sorry, Guillermo. Sorry, sorry. Um <laughs> too real. Too <laughs> real. <laughs> sorry. All right. Uh but too yeah, real. the Guillermo, the evolution of Guillermo's character is fantastic and it's just it's a show that loves its characters it loves its characters uh i'll, I'll be a, a, i i will admit first couple episodes were not uh uh my favorite i think that they felt a little disjointed um <laughs> that being said i think it was like episode three or 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 four it really started to hit its stride, but I am also a gigantic fan of the more that they explore the world, the magical world that they live in, uh, the better the show is invariably. Like, like it is, it is always funny to see the vampires try to, you know, uh, use a bank teller or, or do like some other stuff. But to me, the funniest stuff is when you see the mundanity of the magical world. And this is, uh, they, they, they've gotten more and more into that as, as the season has gone on. That's always been their power pitch for me. And, and I mean, again, it's just, it's, it's also just hard to go wrong when you've got one of the best casts on television. Yeah. Like, like, like as Brian explored before, like when you, Matt Barry is one of these people that's like maybe you heard of or seen, but then you watch him in this, and you're like, this guy is a treasure. And then you look at what he's done and you're like, oh my God, like it's amazing. Brian's yeah. nodding to everybody. Brian yes. is nodding. Yes, he's yes, like, yes. Uh yeah. no, I I've 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 said that uh Brian has a physical reaction to Matt Barry's voice in the way that like toddlers react to children's television that they love a lot it, it, it is just like a sound a rhythm and brian's just like ah same. well i for one can't even imagine what you're talking about same. however i will say this has been a fantastical uh, after thing same <laughs> it's like watching watching defend turning a baby into a vampire <laughs> just just I would watch a show. And it's just him accounting for like, like I, I want him to so tell horrible. I want him to read the, uh, the uh, Ted Bundy tapes. Yes. Yeah. All of that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Unfortunately I got, I got homework to, to start getting done on, but uh, 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 oh, what a good discussion. <laughs> all right. It's been after. Yes. That was more Bane than. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a little there's, b arthur b there, arthur bane there's a line that i'll spoil it's it's a total not secretive it's a matt oh, berry gosh. line where he, they're they're trying to debunk uh a, a myth and he's like it's a myth like big penises <laughs> 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 and it's like he's lived for thousands of years thousands of years <laughs> just so oh, good so good all right i gotta go i love you guys later all right everybody we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up here we'll be back in a few hours with cord killers everybody check out everybody on the socials and stuff bye bye so bryce when i called you guillermo it just meant that brian's a blood-sucking vampire that's all <laughs>